Today, there are almost 2 million ATMs around the globe. And although the use of this machine has lessened in recent years due to people using credit cards, it's still probably one of the greatest creations of all time. But how is this machine that made depositing and withdrawing cash so easy actually made? Well, let's find out. Hardware. The hardware of an ATM is made up of two sections. The bottom steel safe, where the cash dispenser is present, and on the top, there is the head module, where all the user features are present. Cutting. Most of the non-electrical parts of this machine are cut from steel sheets, but how is it done? Well, the workers put the steel sheets into a computer-guided laser cutting machine. The laser beam is responsible for most of the cutting. It uses focused light, which helps it to generate intense heat. The heat then melts the steel and it becomes possible to make the cuts. The simpler parts are stamped with a die in the press and then, with the help of a robot, these cut pieces are loaded into a fully automated computer-guided bending press. Pressing and bending. In the next step, the press is responsible for stamping the simpler parts with a die. After the completion of this step, the robot again loads the pieces into another computer automated machine, the bending press. It bends each of the parts into shape according to the requirement. After all the parts are cut and molded, they are then put together with the help of a spot welder that is also completely handled by the computer. This process is done at set intervals. However, for the complex parts, the process becomes a little complicated. That's where the computer-guided 3D laser comes in and welds the entire joint. Dipping and drying. Next up is the transportation of the steel parts. It is done with the help of a transport system. It dips all the steel parts into a metal primer to prevent metal corrosion. After dipping, the steel parts are then dried in an oven. A liquid powder is used to spray the housing parts and then it is time for baking. The parts are sent into the oven and baked until they have the desired color. These parts are basically put together to make the internal structure of the ATM's head module. Assembling the parts. All these products, including the power unit and the ATM computer, are then assembled by the workers in the factory who then lower the head module onto the ATM steel safe. Now, let's talk about what this space looks like. Well, it has walls that can be up to two inches thick and inside the operation, the panel is aligned and assembled as well. The panel is placed at the front of the head module and contains everything that can be used at an ATM transaction, including everything from the card reader to the keypad. Not only that, but it also includes the speaker system. The keypad also plays the role of encrypting the user's identification number inside the ATM. And another very important part that an ATM machine has is its security cameras. You'd be surprised to know that it's not just one, but up to three security cameras. They record the keypad as well as the cash tray. The next thing the manufacturers do is connect the monitor to the internal computer. The card reader and the receipt slot are also installed in the same place. Depending on what the requirements of the bank are, some companies are also told to insert a separate module that is responsible for managing the cash deposits. For these ATMs, cash out slots are used and they accept deposits. Once all this is done, it is time to insert the shutter. The workers put this flap on top of the cash out slot and it is open when the machine accepts a deposit or dispenses money. Hold on, we're almost there. The assembled parts are almost looking like the proper machine now. However, there are a few more steps left to be finished. The next thing that is done is the operation panel getting mounted to the head module. Preparation of the electronic mechanical unit. On a separate assembly line, the workers prepare the electronic mechanical unit, which dispenses the money and also works to accept the cash and checks for deposits. Then there are different cassettes loaded into the unit for each cash denomination. The bank is then responsible for separating and stocking the cash for their ATM. However, before this unit is installed into the machine, it is attached to a test computer first. And after testing different transactions with fake bills, the functioning of the unit is made sure. This is done so that the correct amount of money is dispensed at each transaction. Unit testing. It is important for the units to be invulnerable to any kind of physical attack. This is why they have effective safes with dispenser mechanisms. This is to prevent any attempts made by the thieves to raid the machines. Modern ATM physical security, which is based on other kinds of money handling security, concentrates on denying the use of the money inside the machine to a thief. The question here is, how is that done? Well, it's done by using different types of intelligent banknote neutralization systems. That's not all though. The machine has to be able to survive different natural disasters as well. And so 
they have to go through a series of different kinds of tests. If the electrical machine unit qualifies after a couple of functioning tests, they are then attached to the safe of the ATM. At this point, the testing has just begun though, because the machines still have to go through a few more quality control tests. First of all, there is a shake test that is done to ensure that the ATM can withstand a not so smooth ride during its transportation. The next test that is conducted is known as the shower test. And yes, you might have guessed what the test is going to entail by its name. The machine is showered with water to make sure that the machine won't stop working on a rainy day. Another important thing that the machine is supposed to withstand is a severe climate. That is why it is exposed to all kinds of temperatures starting from negative 40 degrees up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. For this purpose, the machine has a pre-installed heating and cooling system as well. If the ATM passes all of these tests, it is ready to be installed and used. Software. Well, of course, an ATM won't be able to perform any functions at all until it has software designed for it that tells it what to do and how. Every ATM comes with its operating software that is already installed. However, the banks that install their own custom software or the manufacturer that does it for them fall into a different category. Today, most ATMs are running with the use of Microsoft Windows. However, up until 2014, more than 95% of the machines were running on Windows XP instead. Nowadays, we rarely find one that's still running an older version such as Windows 2000 or Windows NT. With the move to a software base that is more standardized, financial institutions have been increasingly interested in the ability that allows them to pick and choose the application programs that they want to be installed into their equipment to drive and operate them. With the onset of Windows operating systems and XFS on ATMs, software applications can become more intelligent and efficient. What it has done is that it has created a new breed of ATM applications commonly referred to as programmable applications. These types of applications open a whole new gateway for an entirely new host of applications in which the ATM terminal can do more than only communicate with the ATM switch. It is now empowered to connect to other content servers and also allows innovative systems such as the video banking system. Working of the machine. On most modern ATMs, the working is more or less the same. The customer identifies him or herself by inserting a plastic card that has a magnetic stripe or a plastic smart card with a chip on it. And it contains their card number and also some security information, such as an expiration date or CVC code. After that, the customer verifies their identity by entering a passcode, which is also often referred to as a pin of four or more digits. If the pin is correct, the customer is able to perform a transaction. After the transaction is complete, the transaction record is printed, usually consisted of the action taken, date and time, location, any applicable fees, and available balance. However, if there are several unsuccessful attempts of entering the pin, some of the ATMs retain the card as a security precaution to prevent an unauthorized user from simply guessing the number by trying again and again. If the customer's identity cannot be identified, the machine sometimes ends up destroying the card. In some cases though, a transaction may still be performed at the ATM that allows the customer's PIN to be changed securely. Needless to say, the invention of the ATM has surely been revolutionary. Click on any of the two videos on your screen right now and we'll catch you guys in the next one.